In today's video, I'm going to walk you through on how I set up my studio in the basement. Right now, we have three clients that we're filming in the basement where they do their talking head for their monthly content. The good thing having a studio in the basement is I don't have to carry all my gears and equipment to a location. In here, it's already set up and ready to record. My basement is probably 24 by 13 feet with an 8 foot ceiling. There's a small stock room where I put all my gears and equipment, a room where my furniture is and that's about it unfortunately there's no carpet in my basement because carpet really helps in sound absorption that's why i bought two carpets which is like four by six foot and place them under the table all the gears mentioned in this video are in the link description so here's my first tip decide what background you will use we went for savage paper because we don't want to paint our walls since we have multiple clients, we wanted to use multiple colors and we want to cover these tiny windows. In hanging the savage paper, we went to buy this half inch metal flange. I got this from Think Media and I have this auto pole from Strobe Pro just to hang it on the other side. I can use two auto poles to hang the paper so I won't drill through my walls. But since we are aiming for three sets of backdrop, we went for the metal flange and have these two tubes, one on my right and one on my left. We choose nine foot because that's the longest that we can find in the colors we want. We went for I think ultramarine or kind of like dark blue and we have black and I think black has 12 foot. The last savage paper we have is Kokwa, which I didn't like because it's too dark in my opinion. I should have waited for beige, but at that time it was out of stock. We put this shelf unit from IKEA and a real plant. Now I'm going to change this to a fake plant because this is high maintenance for me. I need to water this plant and I noticed that there are fruit flies in here so I'll go with a fake plant next time. Now if you don't have this shelf unit, you can put anything you can find in your house. Just use what you got. Now if you really have nothing to put and you have an extra COB light, you can get this optical snoot to shape the light. I had fun using this tool. I choose this window looking shape and place it horizontally. I choose black background since I'm only using 60 watts of light. So once you have the backdrop set, the next tip is choose a tight lens. Since this is only an 8 foot ceiling, I choose a Sony 55mm 1.8 so I can compress the background. If I use 24mm or wider, you can see the sides and the ceiling which I don't want. I think you can use 35mm but since I have more space at the back, I will take advantage of the 50mm. 50mm is the closest you can get to the human eye. So here's my next step. Control the lighting. The good thing about a basement is I have these two little windows which I can easily cover because I want to control the lighting. I turned off the room lights every time we film because room lights has a low quality and the direction of it it's not good for the subject. When I have a controlled environment or meaning no window lighting or I have controlled lighting I can use any key light I want, whether it's cheap or expensive, whether it's only 60 watts or 300 watts. So it doesn't matter what key light you have as long as it's COB. I'm using the Godox VL150 and I attach a 48 inches softbox. The bigger the softbox is, the softer the light it produces. I also have this 2 foot pavo tube from Nanlite for hair light. I love this light especially for people who are blonde because the subject just really pops. Speaking of hair light, in order to have a realistic hair light, we need a practical light on the same side where the hair light is. I mean in this case, I have practical lights on both sides. You need a practical light behind the subject so you can tell that the practical light is lighting the subject. But in reality, it is not. It's my hair light. This pavo tube is bicolor and RGB light. So whatever the color of my practical light, I can adjust it accordingly. I'm using a 13 feet rotatable boom light to hang this nan light. I always remind myself if my key light is at my left, my hair light should be at the opposite side. They should face together. If for some reason you or the client want more light on the face and doesn't want the shadow, I can add a white reflector for fill light. If the client doesn't want dark and moody, I can turn on my pot lights at the back so the background is well lit. But I make sure it doesn't affect my subject. That's why I always remove the bulbs 
in front of the clients. I can definitely use the Aperture BC7 but I don't have it yet. By the way, if you are getting value out of this video, please hit that like button and it will help me to produce more content like this. Now this is my next step, recording the audio. I haven't installed any acoustic panels here, I just have these two carpets. I'm using the Shure SM7B microphone so I can place it under my client's chin. I stay away from my boom mic because it is farther away from the mouth. In my experience, I get so much clean audio than my boom mic. I'm using a Rode PSA1 because before I was using Samsung desktop mic stand. I really like it but when their hands starting to move around and hit the table, I can hear it in post. That's why I use Rode PSA1 and that solved my problem. I'm using this Vocaster 2 so I can record the audio in my MacBook using the Adobe Audition. And also getting this 3.5mm in Vocaster 2 going to my camera to record the audio in my camera A, which is the Sony FX3. I also use the headphone jack which is a 1 4 inch TRS in Vocaster going to my camera B which is the Sony A7 III. I'm doing this because just in case my team or I forget to record the audio in the Adobe Audition or something happened that I don't have control or I don't have the audio file anymore, I still have the recordings in my camera as long as I am recording in the camera. By the way, it happened to me before. I was using a Rodecaster Pro to record the audio and when we finished recording the content, my client just plug out the power outlet of the Rodecaster Pro while it's still recording and I haven't pressed the record button to finish the recording. When I got in post, the file was corrupted. I tried to fix it with data recovery tools and it didn't help because the file is only in kilobyte. I'm assuming that the Rodecaster Pro didn't write it completely. I don't know, I just know it was pain for me and to my client because we need to reshoot everything like the whole content which I said to myself that from now on I will do backups to my camera. The audio in the camera are not that clean compared to the Adobe Audition but hey at least I have backup. I can still clean that in post. So here's my next step. Use a fixed chair. Choose a chair that doesn't swivel. I don't want my subject to move or swivel around. Having this kind of chair makes it easier for them to focus on the content. I realize that people who swivel in front of the camera doesn't know that they're doing that so I always prefer to use a fixed chair. This is my next step. Use manual focus. Since this is a talking head, I make sure I use manual focus. I'm shooting at 1.8mm so that the face of my client is smoother looking skin. Since I have the Rode PSA1 and Shure SM7B, I know it will sometimes focus on the mic if it's in face eye priority in autofocus. In order to avoid it, I use manual focus and I use a 5 inch monitor to check my focus. So here's my next tip, use a teleprompter. This is for our clients who love to script things out. And as a video editor, I encourage my clients to use a teleprompter because it will save so much time in editing the video. I'm using one right now, no shame. It will also save my clients time in recording the video. But we also have clients that doesn't need or doesn't use teleprompter. They use an outline which is fine to me because they're really good and most of the time, it's only one take. So there you go. I hope these tips help you to set up your own studio in the basement. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon.